If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, have you ever had an unexplained or scary experience? This is pretty freaky. I still don't know how to explain it. About two years ago, my sister, her infant nephew and I moved into an apartment that, we later discovered, was used as an elderly community. From the moment we moved in, we felt uneasy. The weird feeling wasn't enough to get us to ditch our seemingly awesome apartment though. Especially not a cheap two-bedroom that allowed dogs and had a pool. A few months after moving in, weird stuff started happening. Shadows moving in an otherwise still room, objects not being where they had been left, baby toys talking to themselves in dark rooms. Just the kind of thing to make your skin crawl. To make matters worse, even when it was bloody hot outside, my bedroom would be freezing and the closet door was always broken in an open position. It didn't matter how often we would get it fixed, it would instantly be broken again. Now this is where it gets a little crazy. One morning I woke and my bed had been moved. I hadn't even as much as wrinkled my sheets while sleeping, yet my bed had been slid three feet away from the wall. I then began having pretty intense night terrors. I'd jump out of bed screaming and throwing my blankets, begging for my sister to save me. This would happen three times a night. One night I had a particularly vivid night terror, only I didn't feel frightened. I jumped up in bed, looked around and saw eyes peering around my broken closet door. I leaned in and saw a man, mid-twenties, staring back at me. I said, in the calmest voice I could muster I'm going to give you a few minutes alone, but then you need to leave. I stumbled to the living room and sat on the couch for 10 minutes, then walked back to my bed. From that moment on, no more baby toys talk, my closet door closed with ease and my bedroom was normal temperature. Man, hopefully someone will believe me. I've told this story to my crazy Spanish teacher, but that's a story for another time. So a few years back we went to Dave and Buster's for my cousin's 21st birthday. Really cool place, had tons of fun and won a jackpot on stacker in this giant ball drop game. Fast forward a year later, and it's my other cousin's 14th birthday. Me and her are like best friends, so of course I had to go. So we go to Dave and Buster's, and my older cousin drives us, mom had a migraine. Mind you, this is about a 45 to 115 minute drive with traffic. We get there, bagging on my cousin the entire way. Same old thing, great games and whatnot, the service was crap though. It's about 1 in the morning and we have to go, since the mall is shut down entirely with the exclusion of midnight showings at the theater. So we're off on our merry way, going home after a long day. Yet we parked on the opposite side of the mall. We try to cut through, but the security says no, walk around. I thought he was being a total dick, maybe he was trying to protect me now that I think of it. So we try to walk around, and then what do you know, a clusterfuck of trees. It's like a goddamn forest in the middle of a parking lot. Here's where the paranormal begins. We then go back in the mall, and we find a different, female security officer. We tell her our dilemma and she understands fully. She says we can go, but we have to go straight to the parking lot. So we start going, the mall sure as hell is awkward empty. Dead silence, with the exception of our footsteps and our chattering. Then we hear a scream. A deathly scream, demonic in a way I've never known. We just ignore it, we thought it was weird but hell it was probably some drunk girl. We keep walking, and we're about halfway there when the scream is louder, and much closer. It was at this time we got a little scared, and it got colder the farther we went. We were almost there, and the scream was extremely loud, as if she was right across the way, yelling for her life. Words truly cannot describe the sound, I can hear it to this day. We run up the escalator, and the scream reaches its peak. It's as if she is screaming directly into my eardrum, my anvil dying for a break. We go to the sliding doors, which have a light indicating it's on. We get there, and the light turns off. We hit the emergency exit frantically to no avail. We are freaking out now, what the hell is this thing and is it stopping us? We try another door next to it, and that doesn't work. The entire time the screaming continued, without a single breath being taken. We try to open the door again and thank god it opened. We literally run to our car, which from a distance is perfectly nice, brand new and washed. The moment we step near the car, the windows instantly are filled with mist, all at the same time. We get in the car and drive home, talking about what happened. To this day, I have no idea what the fuck that was. People don't believe me, but goddamn that was not a good day. This may sound weird and to this day I still have no explanation as to how this happened. I live in a 36-story apartment building and was on my way to go out to the mall. We live on the 30th floor. I get in the lift at floor 30 and press the ground button, floor G. When the lift opens at ground, I notice the whole foyer slash lobby area is completely different. 
different couches, lights, colors etc. I was really taken back by it. I make my way to the exit and after seeing the outside area and then looking back to the building entrance, I realize that the building isn't the one I live in. This building was in the same local area not too far away from mine but I have no explanation as to how or when I got there. This all happened while I was in the lift. I'm the kind of guy who is very skeptic and down to earth but this still gets me. When I was younger, I lived with my grandma. Her house was, to say the least, fucking spooky. We would hear noises at all hours of the night, and not just the house creaking kind of noises. More like people talking in hushed voices in odd rooms in the house. We heard dogs barking in our basement, we didn't have dogs at the time. But the one story I have, is I went to the bathroom late at night, and the bathroom mirror faced our dining area. So, walking into the bathroom, of course I look into the mirror, and looking into it, I saw someone standing at our dining room table. Old, old clothes, long white hair and a very dressy type suit. I turned around to look and didn't see anything. Needless to say, I slept in the bathroom because that shit. Mine's kind of long, and I think it may fall under the unexplained more than necessarily paranormal but here it is. When I was 13-14 I lived in Hawaii on a military base along the side of a volcanic crater, AMR, for those who know the area. The townhomes we lived in were up along the slope of the mountain, but the last 500 feet or so were empty hill space, leading to a cliff overlooking the crater, which had businesses and such in it, long dormant. Well anyway my friends and I, being the young teenagers we were, loved hiking the side of the crater and walking along the edge, it was mostly flat leading up to the edge and there was a fence along most of it, so this isn't as unsafe as it sounds. We found an abandoned bunker, most likely from World War II, about a mile along the side of the hill, and decided to go exploring. We got inside and it was mostly empty, there was a mount for what I would assume would have been a machine gun at some point, and then there was a locked metal door. It was pretty rusty and sounded kind of hollow, like there were a few spots you could probably see through except for the fact that it was pitch black inside. We'd go to this bunker and kind of hang out and play all the time, until the last time we went. We got there around 5 pm and we were sitting around talking about random things, probably Animal Crossing or Fantasy Star Online at the time. All of a sudden we started hearing this faint banging noise coming from behind the door. We froze and got super silent, and the banging was rhythmically speeding up. Like at first it would be a slight bang every 15 seconds or so, then after about 20 faint bangs they would be 10 seconds apart etc. It got to the point where they were about 5 seconds apart and then they stopped altogether. We looked at the door and noticed some of the rust powder, I don't know WTF it's called, like crumbled rusty door, fall off the door. We got up to nope the fuck out of there, started climbing the ladder out, and the person that left last, there were three of us, and I was second, so the person climbing behind me, swears they heard a loud bang against the door as he finished climbing out. We ran down the hill and some MPs spotted us, and told us we weren't allowed to be up there, and about two weeks later they had built a fence and sectioned off the entire area. Still no fucking clue what was down there, if anything. This story is the only time I've ever experienced something unexplainable and had another person there to back me up so I didn't feel crazy. The fact that it was my girlfriend, who would take the first chance she gets to call me crazy, and she confirms what we saw really drives it home. Me and her would occasionally go outside to look at the stars and on this particular night instead of driving out somewhere we were lazy and just laid on a blanket on my back patio in southern Pennsylvania. The night was super clear and it was during the summer. As usual we were there for like an hour and didn't see any shooting stars. Then this one light appeared. In the night sky it looked about the size and brightness of a star, maybe slightly bigger like when you can see a planet. It was more orangey slash yellow than the typical white star, whatever it was it was very far away. At first I thought we had finally seen a shooting star and could go back inside satisfied, because the bugs were starting to bite. Now, imagine laying on your back. It started from behind the dogwood tree by my patio in my upper left field of view, my feet were facing away from the house and I would have to tilt my head back looking upside down at the house to see it, from there it moved slowly to the center of the sky. Then it stopped. A dead stop. Changed direction and at a breakneck speed and went across the dome of the sky toward the horizon back behind the dogwood. We each said nothing. Seconds later it was back, moving crazy fast. Stopped cold again. Made a 90 degree turn. Went very slow. Accelerated insanely fast. Stopped. It just kept doing this in random combinations. It moved so unnaturally. The sudden extreme changes in speed and direction scared me. There is nothing on earth that moves like that. It wasn't a firefly or a bug in our face or a searchlight it was too irregular. It was up there with the stars. It ripped across the dome of the sky toward varying points in the horizon, 
would be out of sight for a while and then come back. It just kept coming back. Finally we broke the silence. We turned to each other wide-eyed and I said something along the lines of um do you see this shit? She just replied yeah. Wanna go inside? To which I replied yes and we spent the rest of the night racking our brains as to what we saw. For the record neither of us were under any influence nor have we ever been. We saw this light. It was there. And it was way up there. If you saw the perspective of how far away it was, and how unrealistically it moved around it would send chills down your spine like the ones I get from typing this out. I hear lots of stories about lights. Has anyone seen something like this? PM me. When I was in high school I always used to listen to my Discman before I went to bed each night. One night, I was listening to Weezer's Blue Album. The album was store-bought, not burned. I was getting nice and relaxed listening to Only in Dreams when all of a sudden the music cut off and it was just loud static. It was obviously very jarring so I opened my eyes and sat up. In the corner of my dark room, across the way and above the door, there was a white fuzzy orbish type thing just floating there. I couldn't make out much of a shape, but definitely could point out the head and two dark holes that would be eyes. I looked at it for a few seconds then immediately dived across the room to turn a light on and it was gone. I had one of those atomic clocks as an alarm that I never had to set since I got it two years prior. It was just displaying 8888. Not flashing, just the numbers. It never said again and I had to throw it away. Eerie night. I used to live in Arizona, near a mountain sacred to the Native American tribes in the area, Pima slash Maricopa. There were a lot of skinwalker rumors in the area. My friends and I loved camping, and were lucky enough to get permission to use a site near the mountain, along the Salt River for a weekend. First thing you have to understand is that we were a pretty sheltered group of kids. Didn't use drugs, and alcohol in moderation. We mostly went out to share creepy stories around the campfire and nerd out for a night or two. We all spent a lot of time in the desert, and were all familiar with the land and wildlife, even the rarer species. We were sitting around our fire, listening to the river and the animal sounds around us. Crickets, cicadas, birds. The moon was almost full, and the desert was beautiful. Suddenly, everything goes quiet. Just the sound of the river remains, and even that seems spooky. The air grew still, and seemed to get cold. We hear rustling in the undergrowth across from our fire. Out steps a javelina. Javelinas are in the pig family, usually a brownish color, biggest ones about the size of a medium-sized dog. They're actually kind of cute. This one wasn't. It was huge and looked jet black, with glowing red eyes. It paced around a bit, seemed like it was moving around the fire so it could look each one of us in the eye. I have never seen anything look at me like that, and I work with psych patients. Its gaze was cold and searching, like it could see through me. After what like felt forever, it finally backed up through the undergrowth. The night got warmer, and the normal sounds started up again. We spent the rest of the night very close to the fires, and GTFO'd as soon as the sun rose. I really want to believe it was just a male javelina scoping out some territory but every instinct I have says it wasn't. It was Christmas Eve and I was lying in bed, super excited about Christmas and thinking about all the cool stuff I asked for on my list. It must have been around midnight or so, an anxious eight-year-old trying to get myself to fall asleep, so that Santa wouldn't get mad at me and give me coal instead. I had my blankets covering me all the way up to my chin and wrapped around me like a cocoon. It was dead silent in the house and I could hear my parents had finally went to sleep and I knew if I didn't get to sleep soon, I was going to get skipped over. The silence was interrupted by the sound of movement in my closet. I was never afraid of monsters because I always had my army of stuffed animals there to fight them off. So. My first thought was that Santa's elf was here to check on me to see if I was sleeping. Oh no. I thought to myself. I then covered my head in hopes to hide the fact I was still awake and I laid as still as I could. The noises in the closet didn't stop. They got louder and I started to think he was stuck. Then I started to get really worried because it was one thing to be found awake by Santa, but what if he found me awake and knew I didn't help his elf out? Oh man I am in big trouble. So terrified that my present were on the line, I slowly undid my cocoon and made my way to the closet. I opened the closet door and whispered inside. Please 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 don't tell Santa I was awake. I am really trying to go to sleep and I have been a good boy all year please please don't tell him. I am going to sleep right now. I run back to my bed and dive into my blanket and cover up. The blankets were all the up to my eyes, which was scary in itself because covering my mouth with the blanket would catch the blankets on fire, or so said my my aunt, but this was an emergency. I had only left enough to see if the elf made it out safely. I then saw the dark silhouette of the elf quickly emerge from the closet, 
small as I thought it would be but no bells like I thought I would hear. Then it ran across my room to my door, I could see only really vague outlines of it reaching for the door knob. I will never forget seeing the, the outline of the creature as it opened the door and the light from the Christmas tree casted a perfect silhouette and the elf's outline reminded me more of a gremlin than an elf but since I had never seen an elf it never bothered me. The figure left the room and ran down the hallway. I could hear the footsteps trail until faded away. Years later my parents revealed to me that Santa wasn't real and my mind shot back to this day and scared the poop out of me. I have told few people this story and now the entire internet. Thinking back on it now scares the crap out of me but people seem to enjoy the story, so enjoy. I live in a haunted house. I don't mean haunted like Amityville horror or something, but our house is almost 100 years old, and we have a ghost. Our first clue was shortly after we moved in, when some money I had laid on my bedside table went missing. So didn't take it, dogs didn't eat it, it hadn't fallen under or behind, it was just gone. I found it several months later, when unpacking a box from our app. The box was still sealed with packing tape, and the money was in the middle of the pile of papers and shit in the box. I know it was the same money because of the order of the bills and the way it was folded, neither of which was usual for me. A coworker had paid me back for something and done it that way. Second incident was the ceiling fan reversing. Straight up stopped and started turning the other way while I was watching. Not like slowed down, either, but stopped dead. Then I saw the ghost one night, my so swears I was dreaming, but I know I wasn't. He was hanging a hat on a coat stand in the hallway, where we don't have one, and he looked right at me. I could see him clearly, he seemed to sort of glow or be illuminated from a light somewhere nearby, and could describe him to this day, down to the fashions he wore, his mustache, his tired but kind eyes. Somehow I also knew his name, Philip. Since then he sometimes makes mischief. My dog seemed to see him and he occasionally has fun playing with their ball, even in the backyard. He makes winds, plays with the fan, has footsteps. If he's annoying or frightening us we just say firmly Philip, stop and he does. I don't mind him, I sort of like him, actually. I have looked for records about him but as best as I can piece together, he rented a room here during the depression, so there's really nothing with a paper trail. Anyway, that's my best true paranormal story. Growing up, my great-grandmother, dad's side, was my best friend. I spent many of my days curled up in her lap, watching the prices right in her soaps, while she'd gently stroke the back of my head and call out answers or yell at characters on her shows. She was one of the coolest women I have ever known. She was diagnosed with cancer when I was about 12 or so, and within a month she was gone. The hardest part about it was that I was living with my mother at the time, and didn't even know she was sick until my dad called to ask if I'd to go with him to her funeral. For so long I was angry at my dad and his family for not telling me sooner and giving me a chance to say my goodbyes. One afternoon, in my early 20s, while standing in my backyard getting things ready for a New Year's Eve concert slash party my so and his band was throwing, I was talking to a friend. I don't remember how we got to talking about my great-grandmother and how I was still having a hard time with letting go of the anger and resentment I felt. I was telling her how much I wish I'd had a chance to tell her I loved her one more time. I knew she already knew it, but I still wanted to say it. I was overcome with more sadness than I usually felt when I thought about her, and was trying really hard to not break down and cry. All of the sudden, I felt a warm, firm hand make one gentle stroke down the back of my head, just like she used to do when I was small. My heart stopped and I whipped around to see, nothing. However, in that same moment, my sadness was replaced with a sense of peace. I can't explain it, and I don't go looking for an explanation. I don't expect people to believe me when I tell them about it. None of that really matters to me in this instance. The feelings that rushed through my body in those few seconds, and the emotions that came in those that left felt like I was being told everything was already known and to not be sad anymore. It felt like closure. This doesn't really apply to me directly, but still. There was this guy who I used to work with, called Dan. Dan was a chill guy who everyone got on with, but a little bit weird at times. He used to believe in a lot of things, aliens, ghosts, government experiments. A lot. He wasn't religious, but that's besides the point. Anyway, while messing around at work he's explaining stupid things to us. About how he's seen spaceships, and how all this paranormal stuff happens when he's at home. Some of it is quite ridiculous, but I listen anyway. A couple of weeks later he invites me around for a few beers. I was driving so I couldn't really drink, but I still went over. We get onto the subject of ghosts and he starts explaining things to me like, how he was once eating an apple and it exploded just as he went to take a bite. I laughed it off and thought it could have just been some sort of pressure with the way he was holding it causing it to explode. 
He was deadly serious about this, he pulled out a few pictures of this apple and started showing me the damage it had done to him. There was a picture of him with a cut on his cheek caused by this apple. However, I was still not convinced of this ghost he had in his house. He was not messing around. He said hold on actually, I'll show you. He pulls out this shoebox, full of pictures from around the house. He says just flick through those, you'll see. I sigh and say, okay. I'm going through these photos of a recent Christmas. The usual photos. Kids opening presents, the family having Christmas dinner, having a few drinks at night, a group shot. I stop. This was the photo that left me in awe. His family was standing in front of this mirror, and I shit you not, in the reflection of the mirror was an Edwardian girl, smiling straight at the camera. This was not one of those could be a smudge type of things. It was not a hidden behind someone slash can barely make it out type of things, either. No. This was a clear colored taken photograph, with the girl's reflection being black and white. You could make out her face, her smile, her clothes, her hands. Everything. It doesn't end there though. Dan says to me I told you I wasn't shitting you. I go to the next photo. Same sort of thing. Family members have moved around, and so has the girl. She's doing a different pose. She's smiling showing her teeth. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. There was this black and white girl. Standing right in the mirror smiling at me. Like she'd be there the whole time. I felt like someone had just thrown a bucket of ice cold water over me. Like I was being watched. Like I wasn't welcome anymore and I felt like I needed to leave. I put the photos back in the box, and not long after, left. I still don't believe in ghosts, aliens, or anything in that matter. But I know what I saw and I know it scared the shit out of me. Okay so this is a true story that scared the shit out of me in a big, bad, way. Back when we were 18 I had a mate who reckoned he was getting haunted slash stalked by this menacing black figure. I was kinda dubious. So one night I am sleeping over in his parents big old wooden mansion. He gives me his parents bed for the night. It was the perfect storm of creepiness. His stepmother had a massive porcelain doll collection facing the bed and I hate those fuckers. The family dog was an old Aussie sheep dog, but with full cloudy white cataracts covering his eyes so he looked freaky as. Old house, porcelain dolls, blind dog with white clouded eyes. Perfect. So after midnight sometime I wake up in his parents bed. A fucking cold wind is blowing through the open door, in a closed house. Also I got a feeling of intense terror. To top it off, the dog is hiding under the bed and crying. The dog is my proof it wasn't just a nightmare. Then a big, black robed figure coasts in through the door and hovers over the four poster bed. About 8 feet tall. Menacing, temp is icy cold, scare the shit out of me. It hovers for a few minutes while I try and wake up. Unfortunately I am awake. Then I lie there dead still too scared to move while the dog whines under the bed. I am too scared to check on the dog because if it stares at me with those blind cloudy white eyes I will die. The dog was definitely scared as fuck. It stayed under the bed whimpering. Once I gathered the courage, I went to my friend's room and told him what happened. He calmly answered now nah, you know what I go through every night, rolled over and went back to sleep. Fuck that man. He eventually got the church to do an exorcism which apparently worked. That's my story and it is true. Story time. I'm from the Louisville KY area. Anyone who is big into paranormal activity is probably aware of a place called the Waverly Hills Sanatorium. It's an old tuberculosis hospital that had a lot of people die in it. Anyways, I did security slash tour caboose slash video work for them for about two years, from 2005 to 2007. Now, I will say that before this, I did not believe in ghosts, spirits, what have you. Didn't seem possible. But after working, volunteering there I left fully convinced. Too many experiences to count but I'll list the ones that got me the most. One morning, after an overnight tour, people pay $100 to be allowed to roam free in the building and ghost hunt for 8 hours, another security guard and myself were walking through the building, locking all doors and such so we could go home. I was walking down the hallway when suddenly out of the corner of my eye I saw something slash someone run. That was freaky. What really scared the shit out of me was that fact that I also heard bare feet slap the ground as they ran. We took off after them, and should have cornered them, but there was nothing there. Scary stuff. Did anybody ever watch Celebrity Paranormal Project on VH1? Well, they came and filmed their Gary Busey, Hal Sparks and some other celebrities I didn't know were there for that episode. I will tell you this, VH1 rigged the hell out of this place. Most of the stuff that happened on this episode didn't really happen. I won't mention what is to spoil anything, but still. What was real was this, 
After a long 12 hour day of myself paying on set, I stayed behind to do security. Three crew members came after hours to check the place out, and I think it was the camera rigging guy that I took. We went into the building on the third floor and sat in the middle of the hallway. We sat there for a while. I'll never forget, as we were sitting there, I was looking one way and he was looking another. Now, I will mention that in this building there are five floors, with electricity only running to two of them, with the exception of exit signs, you know, fire codes and such. While I'm looking down the hallway, suddenly the last room I can see starts to light up from the inside. I instantly get up and begin to walk over there. The light in the room was hovering, as if somebody had a flashlight and was waving it around. I got about 10 feet from the door and it shut off. So, I ran in there, and there was nothing. I looked out the window, to make sure no one was fucking with me and called the other guard in the building, he was on the 5th floor. Totally unexplainable, but the one thing to this day that gets me the most is something that I actually got proof of. Another night, me and another security guard were wrapping up a half night tour, like the full night tour, but only $50 in 4 hours, and as we were walking onto the 2nd floor the guard stopped me. We looked down the hallway and saw that the interior slash exterior doors were wide open, these doors were installed after the current owners bought the place, they are big heavy doors that lock and you can't unlock them from the outside without a key. Anyways, the other security guard swore up and down he saw a tall dark figure walk out of the door, but I didn't. After a little debate we decided that maybe it was another security guard, and we didn't want to lock him out. So we left the doors open. A few days pass and while I'm there I hear two other security guards talking about something they witnessed. When I spoke with them, they told me the same story but both of them saw the tall dark figure, and went running after it. That's the moment when I suddenly realized that there was a motion detecting camera on the door, so I hit the computer to see what I could find. What I saw was crazy. This door that is shut, out of nowhere just suddenly swings open by itself. There was no one around. Time code on the camera showed how the camera would kick on when it detected motion, like for a moth or other bugs. The door swung open, and no one was there, four hours passed and the next thing on the camera was the guards running out of the door. Scary place man. I highly suggest visiting if you get a chance. I have a man. My husband and I for a time slept in separate rooms. He would often come into the room that I was in in the mornings to get clothes or socks. I would be aware that he was in the room but just ignored it because I didn't wake up. Then, a few times, it seemed like he was just standing there. I woke up to the awareness of someone standing there. Of course it had to be my husband. It pissed me off mildly, I dozed back off, it was no big deal. After one particular episode I was very upset because my husband had apparently been standing there for some time and I thought he was supposed to be at work already. I opened my eyes and there was a man at the end of my bed. I literally screamed and jumped up but just like that he was gone. I confronted my husband about a lot of those times I thought it was him and it turns out it wasn't him. I ended up divorcing for many reasons but the man still stuck around. I don't really get a sense of malevolence or even that it's sleep paralysis because I wake up and can control my body. Parents you know when you're asleep and your kid comes in your room wanting something and you know they're there before opening your eyes? It's exactly like that. I have sat up or opened my eyes many, many times expecting to see one of my kids only to see a man. It's the same man every single time. Tall, slim, dark hair. Kind of an impish look to him. He's actually quite handsome. His features are quite pleasant. Smiling mildly. Over the years he's scared the shit out of me though. If this is a recurrent dream it sucks. I've noticed that he's been slowly moving from the end up my bed up to the side near my head. There is nothing like opening your eyes and looking right beside your head expecting to see a 5 year old child and then seeing a pair of legs that go up and you see this man looming over you and having that vision survive even for a flash after switching the light on. I swear I'm going to have a heart attack one day. The last time I saw him it did something I had never seen him do before. He was right near the head of the bed again but this time when I opened my eyes it was like he'd been waiting for me and he leaned his face in until it was literally eye to eye with me. He had a huge grin on his face and his face was maybe 6 inches away from my face. I screamed and scurried away, turned on all the lights. It was terrifying. Again, I don't get any sense of malevolence but being a single woman alone it's very much a sense of why is there a man in my house and where is my machete? For me. I don't know if it means anything or makes any difference but I've actually sat there and talked, especially after the last time, and said that if anyone wants my attention that's okay but this is not the way to do it, you're scaring me. I haven't really had scary problems since and I've gone around 6 most. Without an incident since then. The thing is too, my grandma apparently had a man as well. Not quite the same way, 
but she wasn't someone to lie or over-dramatize things and she'd seen this man watching her broad daylight in her home. Similar thing, thought it was an intruder. Didn't question it until he was gone. I wish she was alive so I could ask her more. I do remember somewhat similar things as a kid but I remember it being more benign and positive. I would have have someone sleep with me in my bed only to find there was nobody there. It felt like someone was. I just thought my stuffies came alive at night or something because I was a kid. I'm trying to choose to think of it as some sort of benign and possibly hereditary guardian if any of this stuff is real. I have had some terrible, terrible things happen to me in my life and a consistent theme in my dreams and my sleep is me feeling completely loved, and I wake up feeling loved even when nobody in my life really loves me. I don't know if I believe any of this stuff but if there is anything that does that for me I am forever grateful. Either that or my brain is really good at fulfilling my subconscious needs in my sleep in which case thank you brain. When I was younger, around 7, I started getting glass dolls from my grandmother every year for Christmas. I didn't particularly like them, but set them up in my room anyways. After about 3 years I had accumulated about 10 of them. The most recent one I got was dressed up in Native American attire and looked eerily like me. I identify as Native American, something about her just gave me the creeps, so I put her behind the rest of the dolls in my room. They were in a row of seven and the other three behind them. I woke up the next morning to find the Native American doll now in front of a red-headed one, as if they switched places. I was a very fucking superstitious child and pulled her from the group and set her on my bed with a pen and paper and told her I knew she was alive and to write something before I got back. Crazy, I know. I went downstairs for a few hours and when I returned, the doll was on the floor along with the pen. The paper was on my bed, still blank. I wasn't taking any fucking chances so I put her in the dumpster outside. Next morning, I wake up and all of my dolls' heads are facing to the right, they usually face forward, and at the end of the line of dolls, the Native American one was sitting where they were all staring, facing forward. I freaked the fuck out and tore her apart limb by limb and put every limb in a different dumpster then gave every doll back to my grandmother. My mom never believed a word of it and this is my first time recanting it and I have goosebumps. To this day, if I see a doll in someone's home or even a store, I try like hell to avoid it. As far as haunted houses go, mine is pretty intense. We have had several experiences over several years, but this one is my favorite. I walk in from the garage door with my brother and sister. There is a door to your left when you come in that is the downstairs bathroom that leads to a bedroom. My bedroom. We are all talking and coming through the door, everything normal, when the bathroom door slams shut. The lights come on in the bathroom and you heard a woman's voice yell out. At first I believe it is my sister and we must have walked in on her when she was using the bathroom. I go around the house to the other door to the bedroom and enter. Lights out. Window locked from the inside. I go to check the other door leading to the bathroom. Locked as well. You can hear the sweeping motion of feet as well as a shadow pacing the floor. I use a coat hanger to unlock the door after screaming for whoever it was to answer and that I was armed, I believe I had a large metal rod. I turn the knob. Open the door. A huge wave of cold air floods the room from the bathroom. No one was there. My sister was at a friend's house. The house was completely empty and locked up tight. An elderly woman passed away in the house in the late 1970s. My room was her room because it was handicap accessible. I don't think that I have ever really told anyone about this, but I swear on my life it is true. When I was a little kid, probably about 8 or 9, I was playing at our local swimming pool on my own. There were other people there, plenty of them, but none that I knew. I was not, and still am not, a strong swimmer but being so young I had no fear of testing my limits. After a very short time in the deep end I felt myself becoming very tired and I sunk under the water. I remember this so clearly, my eyes were open, which was a big deal and almost unheard of for me, and I started to sink under the water. I literally thought to myself here I go. I am going to die today and as I thought this I took in a great big lungful of water. I sat there for a moment and no pain came, I breathed the water out and took in another heaping breath. Again there was no pain, I just sat there on the bottom of the pool breathing. Like I had done it every day. Eventually I felt rested and swam underwater to the shallow end of the pool where I decided it was probably time to come up. That's when a little pain came, but not enough to cause a scene. I was fascinated with what had occurred and eager to try again, so I dipped my head under water and sharply inhaled the most gruesome and excruciatingly painful breath of water that I have ever had. I came up in a panic and this time did cause a small scene. But to his day I still wonder. If I had never come back up for air would I have been able to breath water for the rest of my life. 
Was that some fork in the road where the universe gave me an ultimatum and told me to choose between water or air and live with the consequences of my decision? Don't know what we happened, but I know at least what happened to me. It happened in college, conveniently right near Halloween. My friends at the time were quite diverse in our religious beliefs and it being all Hallows Eve my Wicca friend wanted to show us all his beliefs. I enjoy the paranormal, I always have. As a man of science I enjoy trying to explain the explainable. Mostly I enjoy the psychology of it, watching out brains trying to piece together things it wants to believe. The subconscious grasping at fragments of reality resulting in a psychosomatic hallucination. He said he wanted to try to summon something. He said to trust him, and trying to remain skeptical we indulged his request. He lit candles and turned off the lights as we formed a circle around candles. We sat down and held hands as my friend bowed his head and began humming. He kept humming his own as we all closed our eyes. Suddenly an image of a cottage appeared in my head. It was surreal and so clear. I could feel myself there. I was in a calm grass field. I was standing just at the forest edge when I slowly walked up the path to the cottage. It had two floors and was a natural wooden brown. I looked over and saw the window near the door was shattered, when suddenly. My girlfriend at the time screamed. She got up and ran out of the room. Another one of my friends jolted back and yelled oh god what did I see? He then starts frantically talking about how he saw himself as a wolf. He then starts talking about the details. He was in a field. He ran towards a house. It was what I saw, everything. It wasn't just some vague details but everything, from the field to the colors. Everything. I asked about the windows because I remember one was broken. He said he saw himself jumping through it. We stared at each other and knew. We saw the same thing. We heard my girlfriend scream again, and we run out of the room to check on her. She is cowering in a corner crying. She is hysterical and won't stop crying about her children. She doesn't have any children. She is in tears crying out for them, crying out for children she doesn't have. We try to calm her down but we can't. We ask you what happened when she says, the dogs got them. They attacked them. Oh god the blood. We tried to calm her down but she kept crying until slowly we all became very silent. What she was describing was what we all saw, and we just sat in silence. I'm a non-believer of anything supernatural or paranormal, but none of my family is. A lot of their stories I chalked up to sleep paralysis, etc. But this one is my mother's and, as far as how it plays out in my head, I cannot think of an explanation. When she was like 13 or 14 she lived in Thailand with her family. They lived in an apartment building on the 7th or 8th floor. She was playing a Ouija board with her brother and two other Americans in the evening, so the sun was still out and there were people walking on the streets near her building. Obviously, people start asking about ghosts, demons, what have you. After a while of scaring themselves, a red glowing orb, like some kind of entity, floats in through the seventh-story window, hovers in the middle of the room for half a minute or so, and then disappears entirely. All of them shit their pants and ran out of the room to where the adults were and the adults sensed nothing and thought they were lying. To this day, more than 40 years later, neither of them relent about what they saw. I see my uncle regularly and he has the same story as my mother. It makes no sense to me, but I simply can't believe it was a demon or Satan or some stupid shit like that, but I can't think of any rational idea for what would cause something like that. When I was younger I went to a buddy's house for a sleepover. His mom came down randomly and one thing went to another she was talking about freaky shit that has happened to the family over the last couple of years. My buddy Justin's younger sister has a mental handicap, I'm not sure what it is. When his mom was telling us stories she would just giggle and keep looking behind us. His mom told us a story of how one night their fire alarm went off randomly in the middle of the night and the doors were opening and closing. Once it all stopped they found a picture of her father face down on the ground smashed and no other pictures fell off the wall. They found out later that night that her father passed away. Later that night after I heard that story and another of how my buddy always complained about a man at the end of his bed I was freaked the fuck out. There was three of us total after his mom left us to try and sleep after the stories, he had a pull-out couch and we set everything up for bed one was gonna be on the floor and two on the pull-out. My friend Kyle is freaking out standing against a bookshelf looking towards the open basement and me and my friend I looking beside him at the TV, trying to convince him to lay down, he kept saying fuck that I wanna see if something is coming he had his blanket wrapped around standing there. Me and Jay eventually got fed up and we were like fuck it let's go to sleep, as I got up to turn the light out. I leaned over the edge of the bed and reached out to turn the switch and before I hit the light the TV shut off and the lights turned out, scared the fuck out of me I jumped back into bed and I saw what looked like my friend with the blanket run into the darkness and my other buddy just grabbed me and screamed. 
Then as things calmed down a bit I said to Jay where did Kyle run, the friend with the blanket, and all of a sudden he comes out from under the bed and said all he did was hit the ground when the lights went off. I told them I swear on my life I saw someone in a wall sheet looking thing run into the darkness. They were freaked out I was freaked out and I couldn't leave the basement because the exit was in the path of whatever ran away so I kept the TV on the rest of the night and never slept. Younger sister claimed to have a name for the ghost apparently it was a little girl named Jody.